Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Seahawk Talk here on the Salve Athletics Network. We're coming to you live on Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope through Twitter every day, 3 to 4 p.m. We have got a great show for you here this afternoon. I am Andrew Pizzelli, your host. We're going to be joined shortly by the producers to lead this one off. But first, we want to remind everyone to keep their distance. the shake with keep your distance i want to bring in the producers now joey morelli and mike defusco to help us get today's program started fellas how are we i'm good mike's muted but... mike's muted <laughs> i'm doing pretty good <laughs> there he is. Uh, guys, <laughs> guys i wanted to start off i wanted to share an image uh that i saw yesterday which i thought was really cool uh the Swiss cheese model. Uh, so we've got social distancing, wearing masks, washing hands, rapid testing. On one side, we've got we've got the 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 uh, typical American family over here, at one and a half children. It looks like, uh, and then we've got coronavirus on the other side. All layers are important because each layer is not perfect, uh, which I think is a great. You know, we've 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 got the keep your distance message. We we have all show long. We talk about washing hands, social distancing, all these things. And I know I've heard a lot of people, we've probably all heard people, oh, well, if I'm socially distant, why do I need to wear the mask? Well, if I'm wearing the mask, why do I have to do this? Or if I'm washing my hands, why do I have to do all these other things? Well, none of them are perfect. They're not a catch-all. But this can kind of illustrate how if you do all of these things, it just really decreases your chances uh, of, of getting sick, not just from COVID, but from anything. Uh, you know, we're heading towards flu season as well. Uh, so just wanted to share this this image. I thought it was pretty cool. The Swiss cheese uh, model uh, to uh, to the COVID-19 outbreak or in general, just hygiene yeah. in general. So uh, your impressions of, uh, of the Swiss cheese I, model. I like that one. I I hadn't heard. I, I'm sure I've heard of it. It called the Swiss cheese method for other things. But like I hadn't I haven't heard of it recently and I, I forgot about it. And I think this is a really good uh, little image because it's like super simple. And yeah, because I see people all the time being like, oh, well, I don't need to be socially distanced if masks work. And it's like, that's not how it works. Like, just, it's easy, people. Just do the things. And 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 now I have this picture I can show them. Well, I haven't met any of these people in real life, fortunately. These are all people on the internet. But uh, yeah, in Rhode Island, we know what we're doing. We're smart. We still, we're still number one. Salve Regina. We, we only got three cases, maybe. I just saw a new one today, but it's like a maybe one. Uh, we're still doing good, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, glad to hear Rhode Island's doing good, as always. And then also, I'm a visual person, so I like to see the model. just makes it simplifies it, makes it easier for everyone. It kind of just reminds me of, uh, you know, a quote I heard. It was like, don't wait till you're sick to be so well-kept and take care of yourself. Just do that in the meantime, and then you won't get sick. Just in general, too, with colds, you know, it's getting to that season. So you don't want to be getting, like, the flu and thinking it's COVID, and then you have to stay out of class. Just, you know, just be preemptive with uh, with everything, you know, the way you eat, the way you take care of yourself, and all that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. us being Salva Regina and, uh, and a religious institution, I had to use an example that had some holy cheese. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, fellas, what else do you guys have here to uh, to start off today's program? Uh, I'll keep just because of the holy joke. I feel like I'll keep us on a religious thing. And uh, I was just looking at some uh, local events and the Toro Synagogue is opening for presentations. Uh, I guess like the inside is closed. So instead of doing tours, they're doing like, uh, I don't know, like specifically, but they, they're calling it historic presentations. There's like, I guess a bunch uh, that are all free. Uh, and you can go to the Toro Synagogue, and uh, it'll they'll teach you about uh, like its history, 
uh, why it is, and this they call it this, one of the, the most architecturally distinguished buildings of 18th century America, which is cool. I didn't know that like ar ar architecturally, I got the word, uh, it was it was significant. I know it's it's the oldest standing synagogue in the Americas. I don't know if it's just North America. I think it's all of, of Americas. Uh, and that's super cool. And uh, it's a really, really cool place. And that they're doing these uh, little presentations. Uh, they're only 20 minutes long. Uh, so you can go real quick. You don't need reservations. They don't cost anything. Uh, there's, you know, social distancing and everything. So if, you know, uh, they're from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Sundays through Thursdays. Uh, and um, I don't know, like, the, how often, like, uh, if there's, like, one going on at all times or, like, how that works specifically. But, like, you know, if you have free time and you're in the area, you go spend 20 minutes, learn some history about a really cool building. And it's right near the uh, Spring Street uh, well, too. So, you can oh, yeah, check it out is. what you were talking about yesterday as well. You can check out both of them. Boom. Easy. Make it an afternoon. You know, you can't go this Sunday because it's a Jewish holiday. I, for, I can't pronounce the word, but it is a holiday. So it's not close, open this Sunday, but uh, it opens today. Today's, today's Thursday. It opens today. Uh, it doesn't say how long they're running for, but I assume it's until the end of the year. And then maybe like uh, starting next year, they might change around the hours. But there's no uh, indication that it's closing uh, or the, this is a limited time thing. So you have all the time in the world to go learn about uh, the synagogue, because it's, again, it's really cool. It's it's a really nice building. I've been there a few times for stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, Joey, you had me at free when you said it is free entry. Yeah, I'll true. go for that. That's, know, right? four That's, word. Yeah. That's the learn, magic four-letter word. No, learn some history, exactly. Um, no, yeah, that would be a great thing to do this weekend or next weekend since it's closed. And then if you're looking for something else to do, this Saturday there's a large amount of sports games uh, going on in uh, – the Newport County area, if I could bring this into the stream really quick. This is to show some of the games going on on Saturday. Uh, you got Portsmouth going up against Shea. This one right here, Block Island at Middletown. You got to think Block Island's going to be at a major disadvantage coming over on the ferry um, and then having to play Middletown. But um, that will be a good game at God Day. And then girls soccer as well is going this Saturday. Uh, got some girls tennis as well. Um, so, you know, if you and then field hockey and cross country. So if you got free time, you know, go out and support some of these local uh, high school sports teams and, uh, you know, show them some love. Here's the interesting thing about that, Mike. I don't know. If it's it have to be the high speed ferry. I think it's the only one that runs from Newport to Block Island. Is that even running right now? So those kids have to take the slow ferry to Narragansett and then take a bus <laughs> mm -hmm. to Newport. Yeah, that. you got to think every every game for Block Island is like the Patriots game was when they had to go to <laughs> Kansas City that day. They're just they're on a boat, then they're in, in a bus, and then they're right off the right off the bus playing a game. So, Ooh. you know, it's always tough. They're gonna have to show some major resilience there. That's wow. That that is gonna be a tough one. Um, anything else from you guys uh, to to talk about today? I think Mike, did you want to talk about this? Uh, uh, planning board thing, or do we want to save that uh, for later on the show? Well, we can tease that. Yeah, we'll save that to the end. I like to read it over. I made uh, a, a last minute uh, count to be able to read the article. So I'm just going to review it one more time and we'll save that one for the end. Cool. Awesome. Well, guys, I'll let you guys get to work producing the show and we'll talk to you again at the end of the program. All right. All right. That's Joey Morelli and Mike DeFusco, the producers here on Seahawk Talk. We're going to go now to some members of our football team, head coach. Kevin Gilmartin, joined by Ashton and Zach. We've got Zach, is it Ludeman? Uh, Ludeman, sir. Ludeman, all right. And Ashton Delasio? Delasio. Delasio, all close, right, that close, was close. Close, close enough. Um, Kevin, I'm going to start with you. Uh, and or I get all three of you guys. I wanted to show a video that uh, this is from Sunday Night Football. Uh, you may have seen it already. Uh, this was a, a goal line play for, for, for the Eagles uh, in the 49ers. And uh, the referees have set the ball. And uh, Malik Jackson, nobody's looking. Oh, yeah, just go ahead and nudge that ball forward a little bit. Why not? Nobody's looking. Take the chance. Ah, nudge that back. Um, one of those things that's just, it's gamesmanship. But I got to figure, on defense, if you get caught doing that, it's 15 yards, not going to matter on the goal line, but a first down. Uh, I think me and Kevin were talking about it offensively. 
Maybe the center's always, you know, nudging, nudging, playing with the ball a little bit. The risk reward there's a little better. Uh, what are some examples of other sportsmanship type things that happen uh, like that, maybe in a game of football that come to mind for you guys? We'll start with, with Coach Kevin. Uh, first thing I would say is, you know, first thing you got to do, though, is I got to blame Philadelphia. You know, it's always Philadelphia that's causing the problems. You know, I got I got way too many friends that like the Philadelphia Eagles, and they're always talking about all the bad things that they do. Heard it uh, heard it in the debate last week, you know, nothing good comes out of Philadelphia. But unfortunately, obviously, I'm po- poking fun right now with it. But uh, that was the first thing I had to jump at. Um, We're clipping this to Mike White. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He's one of them, Floyd Schaefer. You know, we got so, you know, so many people that are uh, that are Philadelphia fans uh, that have that have gone through Salve as well. Um, you know, obviously the centers, you know, they they can play with it a little bit. But I think one of the bigger things is, uh, you know, under the pile. You know, when uh, when there's a scramble for the ball, you hear the whistle, but the refs are still running in from the sidelines or running from behind, and guys are still under the pile trying to get the ball. You know, it's not as not as obvious about that at that point in time, but you know the whistle is over, but you're still going for that ball and saying what's going to happen. A lot of times when two receivers go up or a receiver and a DB go up for the ball, and they both get their hands on it. You know, they're, they're struggling to find out who the ball is. They're on the ground, and they're still rolling around with it. That's kind of a little bit on that. You know, th- those are a little bit of stretch, but that those are the obvious ones where uh, just flat out moving the ball with a center, inching it forward. I mean, you know, there, there's – there's not many things that you can do that blatantly get away with it. So, uh, you know, it's definitely uh, funny to see when it's caught on film. That's the, that's the thing. He he got away with it. Most oftentimes guys don't get away uh, with those type of things. Uh, Ashton, Zach, any any thoughts on uh, on this play from you guys? Um, like Coach Gill said, uh, it's typical of the Eagles football. But, um, <laughs> no, I mean, there, there are always little things you can do to – I mean – I never really messed with the, the rules of football, but I I can't say I've never untied someone's shoelace at the bottom of a pile, tied them together, this little stuff. I mean, I would say like if you're good enough, you probably shouldn't have to cheat. If you're, if you're good, and if you have like a confidence in your team, you shouldn't really have to cheat. You should know you're gonna get that stand. So I mean, moving the ball, like you know, even though it's like an inch and a half, I mean, it's kind of showing that like you know, maybe you don't trust your teammates as much. Which if you're good enough, you shouldn't have to do that. So I mean, I guess the way I see it. Now, in our pregame questionnaire, uh, you know, Coach, uh, let us know you guys were coming on. Uh, Ashton, you you transferred here in January from Springfield. Zach, uh, you're a freshman from Florida. Uh, Coach noted that you guys consider yourselves cousins, but oh, we aren't are cousins. related. We are, we are uh, you got to explain that for me a little bit. How's <laughs> that are, work? We are 110 percent cousins, and that's what I stick to all the time. That's what our moms would say too. We are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> both our parents came here. Uh, they were best friends, been best friends ever since, and. Uh, that's basically, but if you ask me, we're 100 percent cousins. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I've known Ashton since I've been born, so it's just how it is. Oh, that's cool. So you, your parents both went to Salve. I was going to ask how you knew each other and how did that factor into your decision to come to Salve? Yeah, both of our parents came here. They roomed together, I think, uh, towards the end of their uh, four years here. And um, oh, you, sh- you should hear them together. All the, all the stories there, they always bring up and then stop talking about. It's, it's funny. <laughs> uh, they're coming up this weekend, as a matter of fact. So that should be fun. Yeah, it's it's definitely a definitely like when they're together, it's just it's it's like they're sisters. It's like it's crazy. They just have a bond that uh, you know, you can never like really see, you don't really see very often. But I mean, it's it's just cool to, to hear them talk about stories and everything. And it's a yeah, it's basically it, what he said too. Are you happy now that you guys can kind of make your own stories? Be like, guys, listen, no, 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 I don't want to hear your <laughs> stories anymore. You're gonna have to they, put up with my st- stories. They still talk about like she, my mom, were like, well, she was here last weekend, and she was talking to me like I didn't, I like it's my first time here. So you got to go this way to get to here. You want to go this way to get the short way to the campus and everything. I'm like, mom, I've been going here for a couple of months. You know, I, I know my way around. And she's like, no, you have no idea. So and she'll always know more about campus than I do. So I don't know if that's brought to Melissa, but. Well, she's, she's known it for 20 plus years, you know, you've only got a couple months. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but funny thing from my point of view is, you know, uh, Ashton gets here, you know, and, and then we start recruiting Zach and, and I didn't know they knew each other when, when it first started in the process. And so normally, you know, like, like we recruited brothers that have gone through or, or cousins, you know, the Gambales that have come to the Naggies, you know, so many people that we, we already know going into it. And then, uh, I'm talking with Zach and he says, you know, my cousin's up here, but he's not my cousin. You know, I'm on the phone like, wait, what? What, 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 what's going on here? You know? So I just thought he was crazy, you know, but instead, you know, then you dig in a little bit deeper and you're like, all right, yeah, it, their blood's thicker than water, you know, cause they bleed blue. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. 
Uh, Ashton, what, what is it like, uh, or what was it like to transfer here? I mean, you transfer, you basically get two months and then, oh, go home. Uh, so what is the, what is the transfer process been like for you uh, and what you've gotten to experience so far of Salve? I mean, my family, we call it the 30-day trial. I had my 30-day trial at Salve when I was here for that two months. I mean, it was something that was really cool. I mean, other obviously, Springfield College is a great institution. It's a like, great football program and everything. But, I mean, here it's like everyone's very welcoming. Everyone's very friendly. I mean, I had a, I had two, uh, I had a friend, Don Patania, who goes here. He's my high school buddy. And uh, his roommate, Pat Kaiser, really helped me, and they guided me through. And, um, you know, same with a bunch of people that just kind of helped me and Everyone was very open armed, and it was it was really a cool um, experience here for that like you know two months that we were here for sure. Now, Zach, uh, as a freshman, what has that been like? Uh, obviously, you know, high school spring is, is is cut short, the learning from home thing, and then uh, obviously a strange summer for everybody. Um, but you know, you're coming here. You you come to Salve, uh, and now adjusting to being here. What has your freshman experience been like so far? Well, it definitely wasn't the freshman experience I, uh, I thought I'd be having a couple of years ago. But, um, no, being on the football team here just immediately gave me friends, and I, I'm just very grateful for that. Um, school is – it's very different than Florida school. Uh, I don't know if you've ever lived down south, but school isn't the hardest down there. So it's a big change. But I'm just keeping on top of my work, having a good time within the guidelines of code. Uh, just can't wait for everything to start lightening up and even have a, a better time. Yeah. Now you guys have begun the practice process. Uh, Kevin, we'll circle back to you to start. You know, how, how is that going? Obviously, it's it's not what everybody wants, but you have to have these gradual things, the phasing, all that sort of stuff. So maybe catch us up with uh, where the team is right now with the procedure of practice. Yeah, moving into phase two. Uh, so uh, so we're going forward. Uh, you know, we're throwing the ball around a little bit more, running some scaling. Uh, but the guys are guys have been excited. I mean, you know, in the, you have to. We're, we're making sure that during individual drills and everything, everybody's staying there six feet away. We're still, we're still in tiny pods, but we're able to come together and then separate apart a little bit more. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it's uh, been crazy because, you know, like some guys are gonna get a sniffle or, or a cold or something and, you know, okay, that's one of the symptoms that so we have to get COVID tested. So he gets COVID tested and we're practicing the next day and we practice in the morning. So uh, they're checking their, uh, they're they're checking their um, their response. You know, is it positive or negative overnight? Because uh, to make sure that they can play. So, uh, you know, or not not just them, but their entire pod. Or if too many people are being checked out one day. You know, the entire team we just can't practice that day. We'll just we'll just shut it down. And so, so like this morning we come in for a seven o'clock practice, and the tight ends weren't allowed to practice because uh, one of the players, you know, he was getting tested for COVID. He ended up being negative, of course. Um, but so the tight ends had to go sit in the stands and they had to space themselves out in the stands and they're just waiting for him to text them saying that, you know, he's negative so that they can come out on the field. You know, so it's, uh, you, def- you have the, you have these, uh, these, these rules that, that make perfect sense to, to make sure everybody's healthy. And at the same time, you know, but once it's happening, you're excited. Okay. Now I can get back out on the field. That's kind of, kind of different in the fact that, you know, you know, there's these requirements, but at the same time holding me back, but then the minute it lets you go, you can run out there and play. <laughs> And I think that's the exciting thing. You get to see guys playing football. We were playing Skelly. We were throwing the football around. And, uh, you know, it makes everybody happy to get out there and play football. Now, Ashton, you're a wide receiver. Zach, you're a linebacker. With the restrictions, have you guys gotten to line up across from each other yet? No, not yet. We, uh, he's, um, he's a 7 o'clock practice. I'm the 8 o'clock practice. So, I mean, we haven't gotten that chance yet. But there's been conversations about this for the past, I would say, like se- – seven eight months about what we're gonna what's gonna happen if we go one-on-one or what's gonna like are we gonna laugh are we gonna you know but it's just it's definitely the anticipation is definitely getting there where i I can't wait until we go one-on-one it should be soon though hopefully it's very soon is is he is uh is zach telling you hey don't come across the middle and you're saying like hey watch out for my double move (laughs) oh his double move won't affect me at all i'll be all right I'll just tell Team Melissa on him, so it's fine. That's not my All right. Hey, fellas, thank you so much for coming on. Great story between you two. You know, uh, not quite legacy. You know, legacies in a way. Uh, you know, I, I love that we, it's all a family uh, at Salve. We talk about that. So you guys aren't related, but now you're part of the Salve football family. So great yeah, to yeah. have you guys on. Uh, Coach, great to see you as always, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for Thanks having us. All right, Appreciate here it. Go. The football guys, Kevin Gilmartin, Ashton D'Alessio, and Zach Lundeman. 
freshman and sophomore player from our South Virginia football team. We're going to go now to two members of our women's volleyball team, Mia Lang and Alexa Winter. Welcome to the show, ladies. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, how have things gone for you guys? You've had the return to campus, been here for a while, but getting to get back with the team, how happy and how good does that feel to, even though it's different to be back with the team and practicing and maybe feeling uh, a little bit normal? Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, when we started out practice in the beginning, it was um, like smaller groups and like more fundamental drills. But now that the whole team is like back in the gym, it like feels like we're back and like we're excited to be playing together again. And we're like getting better as a team and it's just really like exciting. Yeah, it's been it's been kind of tough because of like the restrictions and everything, like having to be so far apart from each other, like being in the same gym. But I mean, the drills that we've been doing have been like super engaging and it's been like a lot of fun so far. I talked to coach, he was talking about working in, you know, maybe some, some ways to make it fun and competitive, even though maybe you guys can't necessarily compete against one another. I think he talked about, you know, doing a kill drill, spiking and having, having a little more fun with practice to make up for the fact that you guys can't play. Tell, talk maybe a little bit about those things, how, how he's helping you make practice go better. Can you repeat the question? It kind of like broke up yeah. a little bit. Uh, coach had talked about trying to do some things to make practice a little more fun and, and bring some energy into yeah. the in, into it and have it be competitive without having to compete against each other necessarily because you can't do that yet. Talk about maybe how that's going. What are some fun things you're doing to maybe liven up practice? Um, I think we've gone into like the phase two. So we've been able, we just had like a positional practice. Um, and it's been like, we like for us, like we did a lot of hitting lines and we've been doing different things that like it is competitive, like working on yourself and like working with maybe like one other player, a couple other players. Like we won't be with like too many people, but it's still like super engaging. And it's a lot of fun. Um, and he keeps like the spirits super high. Yeah, our practices are always a really high energy and we're always like cheering each other on, even if it's just like hitting lines or like simple drills. But we're always like cheering for each other and getting excited for each other when we like do good things. How has the team building aspect gone, getting to, to meet and bond with freshmen and, and be back as a group and try and grow together? It's been it's been a lot of fun. Like we for the first couple of weeks, we separated like um, in two different groups. So I was in the group with um, Brighton and Sydney and like they're super great girls and they're super sweet. Um, and uh, we've had like a lot of fun, like engaging with them. We haven't really done a lot of like team bonding of that sense because of what's been going on but still um it's been great to like play with them and talk with them as much as we possibly can yeah they fit in really well with the team and like they're really like competitive really good players and i think they're going to be like great assets for our season starts now obviously everybody's adjusting to you know practice the campus rules and everything a lot of that is online classwork uh, what has been the adjustment there for each of you with your respective majors as far as how the, the classroom things have gone? Sure. Um, so I'm a nursing major, so um, it's been kind of hard because um, we do a lot of hands-on um, like learning and everything like that. But we've split it up. So like um, on Tuesdays, I'm in person and Thursdays, I'm online, which is good because um, you get to stay with like the same group of people and everything like that. And you're not running back and forth to campus. And then, like, for clinicals, um, we, like, start next week in, like, the actual nursing home. We've been in, like, the lab for now. But um, it's been really good. I think, um, like, everyone has adjusted to online learning, like, a lot better. Like, all the technology aspects are, like, a smoothed out. So I think it's working pretty well. Um, and then I am a double major in psychology and studio art. And uh, my psych classes are all um, – uh, hybrid so like some of them are online and some of them are in person and that's been going pretty well um i'm in like some really interesting courses for psych um and then for studio art we i have like a like a three and a half hour studio um on thursdays and it's online on tuesdays so it's kind of interesting how like they've been transitioning because it's kind of hard to have like an art class through Zoom because obviously you're not engaging with like the professor as much as like maybe painting with him or something like that. So it's been a little difficult, um, at least for like my art classes. But overall, I mean, just getting into Antone and getting into like the studio and stuff like that has been 
like we're lucky to even be able to do that because a lot of schools like they're not even doing anything and being like an art major it's like super important to be in person and obviously see the work that you're doing um so i count my blessings for at least being able to get in once a week i was gonna ask we know how things would say like the weight room now you have to use the app you got to book your times and all these sorts of things for that with studio art you know, you're not going to go and say, well, I'm just going to work for 20 minutes on my, my piece of piece of work. Right. That must help tremendously uh, or else, you know, your living room is going to turn into the studio. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's like a definite balance trying to figure out, like, what am I doing at home? Like, what can I do during my one day? And you definitely have to, like, plan accordingly because, you know, you bring your own materials and you're doing your own stuff. So. You kind of have to be like, well, I have this one day of the week. I need to really prepare for that because that's basically the only chance you get to engage with like an art professor or be um, an Antone. Yeah. Uh, what are you guys most excited about? Uh, is it just the fact that you guys have the opportunity to play games? What would be the thing that's motivating you the most uh, throughout the rest of this semester? Um, I think personally, just being able to be with the team right now is boosting my spirits like so much. It's obviously hard to find like the motivation to keep going when we don't have an actual like season right at the moment. So the practices, like you would have the mindset of them being like tedious, but just being with the team and being with the girls, like they're a whole separate family for like me and for Mia. So it's like, even just being with them kind of just keeps pushing us forward that we are eventually going to be able to, have a season and we're just preparing for it and we're just happy to be together. Yeah, I feel like having a season is like kind of bringing us back to like normal life. Like now I actually feel like I'm back at school because I like get to go to practice after my classes and like hang out with all my friends in the gym. And it's just like um, really like encouraging and like there's like a light at the end of the tunnel because like we get to play together again. Awesome. Well, ladies, thank you so much for coming on here today. Uh, wish you well uh, the rest of the semester and hopefully we are having games in the spring. Yeah, of course. Thank, thank you for having you. us. All right. Thank you. That is Alexa Winter and Mia Lang of our Silver Junior Women's Volleyball team. We're going to take a very short break and be back with Kenna Rooney of our equestrian team. Don't go anywhere. So you want to be a Seahawk. Let's make sure you wash your hands, keep your distance, wear your mask, and love your Seahawks. Come on, Sammy. I know it's pumpkin spice season, but you can't bring drinks to class. We have simple rules here, Sammy. Get out. Come back when you can follow them. You gotta take care of yourself and others, even if you are Sammy the Seahawk. Welcome back to Seahawk Talk. I'm your host, Andrew Pizzelli. We're going to go now to a member of our equestrian team, Kenna Rooney. Kenna, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, for those that may not know, uh, I think people you know, don't really know as much about equestrian as they might some of the other sports. So maybe explain for those, for the lay people who may be listening, uh, what it is that you guys do. People probably just think, oh, you, you just ride a horse. Like, Explain a little bit about how the sport and what you guys have to do as athletes. Yeah, so we compete as a team in the IHSA, which is the Intercollegiate Horse Show Association. Um, we travel, we're in like a region with, I think it's 11 other schools, so there's 12 of us total. Um, typically, we go every Saturday in the fall and everything, and we get to the show and the hosting school provides horses for us, and we pull a horse by lottery. And you get on and you go into the ring and you either jump a course and or you flat around and you're demonstrating to the judge how well you can adapt to this new horse um and still you know we get judged on ourselves too and how like well and put together we look as we do it so it's a lot of fun it keeps you on your toes you get to ride a lot of different horses throughout it which is a lot of fun so what are the challenges i mean do you come in knowing you know some schools like oh god i hope i don't get that 
black horse again or something, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> um, yeah. So with us being like, there's 12 of us in the region and we stick with those 12 schools through every year and everything's and like normally like the bigger schools will host more often um, because they have like the facilities for it and the horses for it. So like URI one, um, I love them. They're awesome, but they bring horses usually to every show. So it's like, I know one of them, pasta is one of my personal favorites. Um, I got to pull pasta three times in a row last year. So, I mean, like in that case, like it works out and everything, but I mean, you're like, oh, definitely some of them are, some horses are better than others, but we love them all the same, but um, there are definitely ones you want and some you would rather not get to ride that day. But I mean, you do your best and it goes as it goes. How quickly do you know when you when you get on a horse when you're at a show? Do you know like instantly within 10 seconds like, oh boy, this is not going to go ahead? Or or does it take a little bit longer to know if a, a horse is going to go? Or the same thing, you hop on a horse and you're like, oh my God, this is going to be great. Yeah. So you get to watch them all warm up in the morning. So you get to see them all go and then you get a little description. It's usually a sentence or two about them, kind of everything you need to know to do the best you can when you go in the ring. So that's really helpful. And like I said, you pretty much see the same horses throughout the year so you get to know them pretty well and if they're having a good day or bad day you say the host schools provide the horses does that mean you're not bringing your own horse to school uh to your dorm room yeah yeah (laughs) uh explain too about uh how has it been for you guys as a team what was the summer like obviously it's a bit different i mean even sports or maybe things where you can't meet as teams guys you can still go shoot hoops you can still go for a run Mm -hmm. Uh, how was the summer how do you stay sharp you know what was say like the riding circuit so to speak what was that like during the summer because of covid yeah so this summer um i mean we definitely took some months off um at the beginning but the uh united states equestrian federation better known as usef um they put together a lot of guidelines so i think they started in like end of June, early July, and horse shows have been happening in full swing ever since then. And they're still happening just with different precautions. Like I traveled to shows over the summer with my own horse while I was home. Um, And I have a few opportunities this year with my own horse as a private client of Sandy Point to um, partake in some here and there. Obviously still masks on and everything, no matter what, and um, socially distancing and everything like that. But since you're on a horse, I mean, if you come within a certain feet distance between each other while you're on horses bad things could happen so it's primarily an individual sport so it kind of helps in that sense there's no like face-to-face contact with others so how has it been returning to campus getting the team together what have you guys been able to do yet or so far and you know what do you guys have uh, planned here for the fall if you can compete you know those sorts of things Yeah, so we just held tryouts last week. They were great. We saw a lot of really good riders. We actually expanded our team, giving more an opportunity to participate in something this fall, which is really good. Um, Everyone's so sweet, and we're so excited. Um, We just started practices today's Thursday on Tuesday, Um, so getting into the swing of everything. Um, We don't get the opportunity to compete this fall, which is sad, but we're hoping for the spring. Um, IHSA is still happening. They like IHSA shows are still happening this fall. They leave it up to the schools whether or not they want to participate. Our region as a whole opted not to because of so many schools. The school said no, that they can't do that. So it wouldn't have made sense for them to host anything. Um, but yeah, we have like, we're going to try and do something on Monday. Um, as a team at the barn where we can spread out and each have like our own space and everything, but still get to know each other. Cause it's hard when you have all these new students come in, you want to get to know them, but like, we're not like, we, it's hard to do that right now. Now you mentioned, you know, having tryouts and, and getting to see the, how much experience I imagine for horse, you probably have to have a pretty decent amount of experience, uh, <laughs> to try out. You, so you if somebody just showed up and said like, yeah, I want to hop on a horse, uh, that's probably not, uh, not in the cards, right? Well, so I just say actually has an entire division specifically for people with less than six months of riding experience. So our, um, we have two students who we just added to our roster who are in the walk trot division, which is that specific one. And 
they like a couple of one of them like took a couple lessons over the summer just like in hopes to in preparation for tryouts and everything and then another girl she used to ride like did summer camp for a week every summer just doing lessons just for that week so um she also qualifies for that division but like she hasn't sat on a horse in a year and a half um but those are the ones that like the walk trots the best division that IHSA has so it works <laughs> Are there any other ways people could be involved with the team if they didn't have that experience or didn't want to hop on the horse? What else can you do around? Because you guys have the barn you talk yeah. about. Are there other things you can do on the team to to help out the team? Um, I mean, yeah. we Most of our students um, who are on the roster partake in all our like fundraising activities that we do and everything. Um, but Sandy Point does like their private operating business. So even if um, someone doesn't get the opportunity to partake in the roster doesn't mean that like if they don't want it they can still go and ride if they want to um or if they just want to like go for a pony ride I'm sure like um coach Francis she's really open to just she wants students to be involved and to um partake in everything so she can continue to expand um so it's really good yeah I believe like you said you, you guys have kind of found found the home there at, at, at Sandy Point talk about uh the barn and uh, you know, how, how important that is for, for the team to have, you know, because that's basically that's your home. Yeah. So it's really nice the way the facility set up. Um, it works for us. Um, there are a lot of other clients at Sandy Point that like we've all become friends with, which is really nice. So no matter when you go to the barn, there's always going to be a friendly face that, you know, which is nice. Um, it's so it's so pretty there. <laughs> um, we have two giant outdoors that allow us um, to spread out and then we can have like bigger practices with all of us so we can get more involved. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's close to campus, which is nice. It's only about 20, 15, 20 minutes away, um, which is really good. So you can just like buzz over when you want to go. Um, yeah, the horses are really cool. A lot of very different ones. So it keeps you on your toes and helps when you go into the IHSA ring with that. What are the differences? Uh, you know, you mentioned lots of different horses. What 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 would be the differences uh, between the horses, if you wouldn't mind explaining? Yeah. So, I mean, you can have one that's like they have they're comfortable to ride or ones that can be really bouncy. So you have to engage your muscles a lot more, which is more work and more effort. And um, obviously you want the comfortable ones. And then some can, you know, some you have to like kick forward to actually make the move versus others you have to keep like telling them like slow down I don't want to go that fast and everything um so there's a big mix one can be like really bouncy and really fast and one can be really bouncy but really slow or vice versa with um comfortableness and speed and everything so it's good uh you've talked a little bit about you know getting to know the people on on the team you guys have a pretty good veteran group as well uh how would you describe uh what would you words would you use to describe your team and the, the chemistry and the atmosphere of the team everyone on our team is so supportive our sportsmanship when we travel and when um even just at home like cheering each other on um it's hot it, like in the horse world you know you have someone on course or in the ring for their flat class and you just you want to be quiet because you want them to focus and you also need them to like be able to hear the commands from the judge and everything for what they're supposed to do but like our team the sportsmanship that we carry is i love it um and it's something too that spreads throughout our region so like even though we're competing against these other schools we have friends on every team and like even though we're still competing against them we still cheer for them and like say they had a good day and maybe like one of us didn't have as great a day like we're happy for them and vice versa if we have a better day they're happy for us so sportsmanship i mean it's something we strive on a lot and it shows a lot when we go awesome Kenna, thank you so much for coming on today and joining us here on Seahawk Talk. Good luck uh, with the rest of the fall. And, thank you. Uh, hopefully you guys can have some shows in the spring. Thanks. All right. That's Kenna Rooney from our equestrian team here at South Virginia. We're going to take a quick break and then be back to wrap up today's program. Don't go anywhere.
All right, welcome back to Seahawk Talk. I'm your host, Andrew Pizzelli. I'm going to bring in the producers now, Mike DeFusco and Joey Morelli, to wrap up today's show. Guys, I always like to leave before we get into our final little notes and things. Uh, what were your impressions of our guests here today? Um, I've just been looking forward to hearing from Equestrian for a few weeks now. I'm just excited to hear how it like how it all works. I've been curious. You know, I've looked up the rules a little bit, but it's nice to hear from someone who has participated in the sport to get their uh, take on it. I'm sure Joe, we probably enjoyed that as well with, uh, yeah. you know, learning about something new there. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the same thing for me too. Like uh, I didn't know that that was what Equestrian did, that it was kind of like a, how the rider adapts to a new horse. I thought it was like, cause like my, my cousin does like horse thing. I don't know what she does. She does something with the horses. I assumed it was the same. Uh, clearly it is not. Cause she, hers is more like she has a horse and it's showing off like what the horse can do. But I didn't know the equestrian team was like uh, showing off how you adapt to a new horse. I thought that was really cool. Like I would never have thought to make that a sport, like see how well you can adapt to a new thing. Like, you don't do that with racing. You're not like, okay, let's stick a, let's stick a, I can't think of any race car drivers, but we'll stick one in a new car and see how they handle it. Like, that'd be weird, but it makes sense with horses. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to bring up a little bit of news kind of broke at the the top of the show. Uh, I want to bring it in now. Uh, the NESCAC, uh, which had canceled their uh, fall sports, they've been one of the conferences, the New England Small College Athletic Conference, uh, that's been you know pretty ahead of, of everyone else. Uh, not necessarily that you know they're they're making the the best decisions before everybody else, but they've been choosing to do things before uh, anybody else, uh, and they decided to cancel their winter sports. Um, so no postponement, not oh we'll check it out in the spring. Same thing that they did to their fall sports, they have done to their their winter sports uh, as well. Now um, they just feel that you know their their goal is to mitigate and protect the students on campus and the surrounding communities. They feel that playing uh, and traveling is not going to do that. Um, so they've they've canceled and because they have they have a really extended spring break uh, or winter break rather that kids won't be coming back until possibly February that it would be t impossible to do athletic competition. So no winter sports. Kids, uh, students can still practice, do strength and conditioning, skill development, leadership programming, uh, everything in, you know, uh, accordance with the NCAA rules and then trickling down to the conference rules, institutional rules, and then obviously state and local health guidelines. Uh, they could still schedule games outside uh, of the conference if they wanted at their discretion. I imagine we haven't seen that happen really with anyone yet. But it's not out of the realm of possibility. And for those that don't know, uh, the NESCAC includes Amherst College, Bates College, Bowdoin College, Colby College, Connecticut College, Hamilton College, Middlebury College, Trinity College, Tufts University, Wesleyan University, and Williams College. So the NESCAC, uh, those are some premier schools in a lot of sports, and they already didn't have a fall, and they're opting now uh, not to have a winter. So, you know, unfortunate news, but, you know, every – Every conference, every school, they're making the decisions that they think are in the best interest of the athletes uh, and their communities as a whole. And so the NESCAC deciding today, uh, their presidents did, no winter sports. Yeah, looking back and say even like spring when our season got canceled at Salve, the NESCAC had done so, I believe, a week or two in advance of us. So we had kind of had an idea. Um, so definitely correct about them being ahead. You know, like you said, we'll see how it works out in the future if there was the right decision. Um, but, you know, it's hard to judge their rationale with, um, you know, just wanting to keep people safe. So can't argue with that. But, you know, it's disappointing to hear for those uh, student athletes. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. But, like, you got to do what you got to do. Like, I think ultimately, you know, like they had, you know, people who decided that was the best choice. Like they had professionals who looked at it and were like, that's what we have to do. And it's, it does suck like that people aren't going to get to play. But, like. Um, you know, at least like they'll still get to like have their school year. Like they, exactly. they don't have to stay home and do nothing. They're, 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 they want to keep the schools uh, open. They want kids to still be on campus and practicing and, and being around. We've heard so many of the athletes talk about, you know, and, and even uh, Mia and Alexa brought it up. You know, I you know, what's motivating you, you know, the most is it just having having the games. Uh, and they were just happy to just be around everybody, to be around the team and to be doing things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right now, getting through this, uh, you know, pandemic and everything else, if it's just about, hey, 
you know, we, maybe we can't play games, and that's really, really tough. But we've got our community here. I'm with my friends. I, we're with my team. Uh, and at least we can have that. Uh, and that means a lot to a, a lot of people to have that uh, team environment uh, and to be able to be around uh, your teammates. Um, so in the end, the NSX schools, you know, are trying to guarantee that. And that's what, you know, that's why we brought up the Swiss cheese thing. We bring up, you know, the keep your distance. That's what we're doing right now. We know we're not playing this fall, but uh, we want to be able to keep everybody here and being around each other. So that's really important. For sure. No, definitely. Hopefully. I mean, I'm happy. I think Salve is doing well. So, and I think a lot of the schools in our conference are doing well. So let's just, you know, stay optimistic. Michael, did you have anything else you wanted to uh, bring up here today at the end of the show? Any local news, maybe? Yeah, definitely. I think this is pretty, you know, pertinent to the people in the Newport area. So I wanted to just like show this, even though I unfortunately got hit with a paywall when I tried to read this article. But if you're in the Newport area, it seems like something that you should maybe read up on. Um, apparently, the city's planning board has scheduled a public hearing on the proposed demolition of buildings on Waits Wharf for November 16th. Um, so go ahead and take a look and, you know, decide for yourself how you feel about the issue. And, um, you know, if you want to make your voice heard, there's going to be a public hearing about it. So wanted to bring that up just so people know um, and that they can get an idea for themselves and what to think. And then also this broke this hour while we were doing the show. Uh, oh, Tiverton wow. High School student test positive uh, for COVID-19. Just the one so far. Um, principal had some comments to say. Um, the student has been instructed to isolate at home for 14 days. Um, so, you know, hopefully it's an isolated case, but we'll see how Tiverton handles it now that they have a confirmed positive test. Um, and we'll try to keep you guys updated tomorrow on that. Was Tiverton it- one, uh, any of the schools that were playing games today? I remember we had that games list earlier. I'm not sure if you can still pull that up. Unfortunately, the paywall makes it so I can't go back now. I I read one. I don't know. I'll try to go in the Newport patch and we'll see it tomorrow. But I believe they. I mean, I saw. I know for a fact I saw Middletown, Portsmouth. Don't want to speculate on Tiverton though. But okay. it's yeah. just, just curious. Just, 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 just curious. Is though. that is that Tiverton's first case? Uh, for for the school, yeah, I believe so. I don't know yeah, about the town sweet. itself, but yeah, the school. I think this is the their very first case so it's gonna let's see how they uh you know the administration what they're gonna do interesting hey fellas uh great job as always i uh, love the content you guys bring to the table and the tireless work you guys are doing behind the scenes uh guess what tomorrow's friday so looking forward to it yeah long weekend <laughs> all right we'll catch you guys later that is mike defusco and joy morelli the producers here on seahawk talk for our guests here today, we had Kevin Gilmartin, head coach of our football team, along with Ashton D'Alessio and Zach Ludeman, a sophomore and freshman cousins on the football team, uh, Mia Lang and Alexa Winter from our women's volleyball team, and Ken Rooney from Equestrian. Joining us here today on the program it was a great show. Looking forward to talking to you guys again tomorrow. We are live every day, 3 to 4 p.m. here on the Salve Athletics Network, on Facebook Live, on YouTube, and Periscope through Twitter. Uh, if you wanted to go back and rewatch any episode of the show, you can do so on those platforms, and you can always subscribe to the Seahawk Talk podcast. Just search for Seahawk Talk on your favorite podcasting platform, and you can never miss a show. Until tomorrow, I am Andrew Pazelli. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll talk to you then. Bye-bye, everybody.